vegan. What's up, what's up, people? Welcome to another episode of I Am Negan, a TWD Universe podcast. My name is Adam Vale. I'm an editor over at thecoalition.com. And tonight I'm joined by, uh, as always, Richard Bailey Jr., editor-in-chief of The Coalition. What's up, Rich? What's up, Adam? What's up, listeners and viewers? Uh, We got a lot to say in this one, but uh, quick housekeeping. (laughs) Thanks again, everybody, for supporting us and following us over on Spotify, iTunes, YouTube, over at The Coalition proper, and, and all other platforms. Just thanks a lot for that. It's always good to see everybody still interested in what we did and other things that we're doing here. So, uh, oh, oh, that was a weird noise here. And, uh, yeah, t- um, if, you, if you're if you not aware, we're on all those other platforms. And whichever way you found us, it's fine. And uh, this episode... This is for Fear the Walking Dead, Season 7, Episode 14, Divine Providence. And if you have not seen this episode, you can watch it on AMC+. Plus. It's available now. If not, you can wait. It's going to air on Sunday. So you can check it out there. But uh, yeah, this if this is your first time, we will be spoiling this episode. So if you want to avoid spoilers, just turn this off, come back later. And if you don't care and you want to know what happens, if anything crazy happened and whatever, then stick around. Because we're gonna we're gonna break this episode down, so that's a quick heads up and a warning for any of the new listeners. But uh, here we go, three, two, one, boop. This episode was a hot mess. <laughs> this was a mess. I I don't know what the hell they were thinking with all of it. None of it made sense. <laughs> it, it really, yeah, it felt like a bad soap. You know, like a bad soap opera, daytime soap opera, with all the back and forth, the flip flopping, all in one episode. Yeah, I just don't. There's a disconnect clearly with, and and hey, if people, listeners, go ahead on YouTube, if put your comment, if I if I'm in the minority on this one, but I don't see Alicia as the main character or focal point for this show. <laughs> yeah. I don't. I don't. I, for me, it's always been Morgan. It's yeah. Morgan's show. This is why he left Walking Dead proper. This is. It was about him. And I know people are like, well, you know, they put him on a raft, and he went to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that was recent. But this has always been Morgan's show. He is the Rick Grimes of fear. You know, Madison. Some can argue for the first part. Yeah, she was before Morgan showed up. She she ran the show, and she's coming back. At some point, maybe hopefully we'll see her in the next episode. I don't know what's going on with that because uh, the actress confirmed that she's part of the show again. So we'll see what happens. But man, it's it's like it's all about her, and it doesn't really make much sense because right at the beginning of this episode, we see that she now has the support again. Everybody followed her to fight the tower. They're clearly not ready, but they still show up to do this. And it's like, okay, well, uh, um, Strand has the high ground. He has the tower. He has all the guns. They can just start raining down bullets. But no, you know what? We want to talk. We're going to have a little conversation. Let her in. And Wes is there. He's like, no, no, we can't do this. We can't do this. Like, He's right. He's absolutely right. This whole feud could have ended a long time ago. And <laughs> when they first announced, when she said, we're going to go to war, he could have just put a bullet on her. It's like, nah, no, we're not. So I, I don't get that. I just don't get it. To bring her in and then like, all right, let's let's go upstairs. Let's go talk. You know, let's have a drink and you know, let me give you a tour. What what is this? <laughs> what is this? This is like, a, if you're building up for a big battle, and then you just stop. It's like, hey, let's just work things out. Okay, cheers. No. That that right before I go any further, what did you think of that? Did, right at the beginning, did that make any sense? Oh, no. Uh, to me, it felt like they pretty much are just stalling this entire episode, the inevitable showdown, for whatever reason, after making such a big deal about this being a war with the initial mid-season finale. Um, it just didn't make any sense. And I, and I will also add that uh, as far as West's involvement, uh, I find it hard to believe that after only being 
in the tower for a few episodes. Now, all of a sudden, he believes this is the way. Uh, yes, you all need to surrender, and this is the place that we need to be at. It kind of feels like if that character was there, like maybe he decided to depart from the team at the you know earlier in the season, and then you come back in in this second half of the season after he's been there for a period of time. I think and then it would make sense that um, you can understand after spending some time there why he feels the way he does. But it kind of feels like they just rushed it. This should have been yeah. This should have been Howard. Yeah, it, it, exactly. And and they, and and again because they made the decision to kill off Howard. It's like. Okay, that's fine if you make that decision. But then Wes was was taking over that position in the exact same episode. He's saying, "You need it. You need somebody to help you out. I'm I'm the guy. I'm I'm, I'm the right hand man for you." So it's like they really rushed that whole process of him being there and he feeling like now he's fully behind Strand and he needs to believe in the tower. Because the, my my issue with that is that all of Strand's guys all of a sudden they side with him instead of Strand. That doesn't make any sense at all. Because he hasn't been there that long. Yeah. Strand has been with these guys for a much period, much longer period of time. So oh, yeah. that didn't make any kind of sense. For years, if you want to. Well, we have no sense of time here. But definitely from <laughs> when they were back at the, that other town. Remember, these are the Rangers when he was in charge of them. Exactly. Back, you know, back in that time. So it, none of that made sense. Also, he, she brings Daniel along, and the first thing he's like, "Where's Ophelia?" And again, the clueless look on Strand's face, like everyone else's face, whenever he brings himself, it's like, "What?" Mm-hmm. It's like, "No, she's not here. She's here." Blah blah blah. You did, yeah, and then eventually he realizes, "All right, we got to lie to, him. we got to lie to him too," because everybody's lying to this dude. But. Uh, that whole thing with Alicia, and then, and then to say, all right, we're, we're gonna work something out, because then they get in the elevator, and they, the elevator, the dude, because she pulled out a gun, and they're like, all right, we're gonna, for safety protocols, because like you said, when we were talking about this before, the whole point that she then wanted to do is before they became friends is that she wanted to turn off the the beacon, right? So that way, that mm-hmm. was a signal for her people to come and, and do the whole thing, and then they work out a truce within this uh, within the elevator ride, which I think they weren't even stuck, not even two minutes. Who knows? But once it started moving, guns are pointed from Rangers, and it's like, hey, pull the guns down. We're cool now. It's Miller time. Everything is cool. <laughs> We're working together. <laughs> We're going to make this the safe place. The Strand just did a 180. He yep. did a 180. I mean, the Kool-Aid smile and everything, and everything was cool. You know, he starts opening up. He was like, you know, but even throughout the episode, I can't recall if it was in this part, but it was later on in it. But just basically, he sees her as his the daughter he never had, and that he wants her love, and he wants, and like that right there makes no damn sense, because <laughs> you seen her that that one scene before, because he was surprised that she still had the chain. Remember that he he gave her last season. Yep. Right. And he's like, "Oh, you still kept it." Oh, you know. And so he was like, "Well, not really. She took it from the dead dude that you threw off the roof." Yeah. You know, it's like, what? What are you talking about? What's wrong with you? If he really cared that much about their relationship, then he could have just brought her in right at the beginning. That's it. Hey, listen, I got a tower. Come live here. That's it. No, he didn't. He banished her. He caused all this heartache. He talked about killing her and everyone else and all this stuff. And then that the writing made no sense. It made no sense. It's as if they wanted to erase everyone's memory of all that. It's like, oh, remember everything oh, that yeah. happened early part of the season? Erase that. This, this. So, so I, I, I do have a theory about what they were trying to do that I will discuss later. But what I will say in, in terms of this particular t- topic is that I think the intended goal was... Because of the conversation that him and Alicia had last season, and the fact that she he it didn't feel as though he didn't feel as though she was convinced that he can change and he would instead be just be the same person. So what they I guess they were attempting to do this season is that he did all of these things, built up this tower, so he can prove to her that he was a good person or whatever it is, and that that was supposed to win the love that he wanted to go after but uh it, it, again it didn't make any kind of sense no because uh, if that's the case he could have just brought her in when he saw her exactly the first one was like wow you're still alive come in you know we'll, we'll set up a place for you this is your home too no none of that it was oh, 
it was it just didn't make any sense and and then of course then Wes plays that part like you mentioned and he's like no this is, she's just trying to be sneaky with you and she's just gonna double cross us I was with her and that was the whole reason why he got promoted so fast mm-hmm. is because he said he knew all the ins and outs of what they were planning remember when he grabbed the phone yep so for for the for Strand to turn around and says no I know her much better than you do I know what's going on here then why did you want him at all? You know, because clearly we know, as a viewer, we definitely know you have history with her from season one. They're, they're, these are the original crew right here. All three of them, they're with Daniel. That's mm-hmm. Those are the OGs of the show right now. So we know this, but Wes clearly doesn't know this. <laughs> and it's like they put him in this spot. To now he's the big villain, and we're supposed to be like, oh man, we can. What's going on here? I don't care about Wes. Yeah, I yeah. Don't care. Sorry, don't care. Did nothing for me. You know whether he lived or died didn't matter. Sorry, I probably would have felt more for Howard then because Howard, he was always a prick throughout the entire time. <laughs> <laughs> so. You want to see him get his comeuppance. You know, you want to say, oh, look, see, he, this is what he was doing. He was conniving. He was working his way up. Then that would make more sense when they get to that standoff and exactly. he's telling everybody, the, the soldiers, put your guns down. And then he's like, no. And Wes like, no, no. It, it made more sense if it was Howard saying no and saying, look, you see, he's having some mental issues and she, he's being brainwashed by this person, blah, 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 blah. Then it make more sense because they're like, hey, you know what? Howard, we've been on missions with you. Because remember, Howard was always, he was he was a go-getter. He went out there in the woods when he found um, uh, Dwight and Sherry, remember? Out of nowhere, he, he found them. <laughs> well, there you go. He also found everybody at the submarine. He, he was out there, front and center. So if there's anyone that would get the trust and have the respect from the Rangers, it would be Howard. But West... What did West do? West, West went in there, and then he had the nerve. And again, this made no sense. He's like, they left me to die in the bunker. Um, you chased after them to kill them in the bunker. Remember that? Yeah. yeah. That was in the last episode. So <laughs> what do you mean left you? It, it just, ugh, man. It, 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 none of that. that that just upset me that whole thing and then of course they get away they start running uh, They because Daniel helps them out and then Daniel's like take me to Ophelia and then at this point this is when uh, uh, um, Strand was like yeah we gotta play along yeah yeah, yeah she's upset I, I know exactly where she is you know don't worry just get, just get us over there and like, don't lie to me I was like everyone's lying to you buddy <laughs> I'm sorry someone's gonna pay for this that's all I kept saying. Someone's gonna say, really surprising, and I, I guess I shouldn't be surprised because we heard the showrunner in the last episode talk about they're, they're still under COVID protocols, so mm-hmm. they try to reduce the amount or keep it to a minimum when it comes to the cast and, and who they can have on set. So this is it would explain why we didn't see uh, June and some of the other members that you think we would have seen front and center in an episode like this. It, well. We we saw them later in the episode. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. In, in yeah, yeah. The same in the same area at yeah, the yeah. same we time. Say, exactly, because yeah. I thought that definitely when they finally got to Charlie, that we would see June there. Yeah, because uh, that makes sense. She's a doctor, and we were like, oh look, I'm treating her. This is a, you know, explain it, and I thought maybe this is the person that's gonna die. He's just gonna flip out and just start shooting at everybody. You know, random shots and randomly hit June, and oh no, that goes no, that didn't happen. Uh, Strand takes, uh, he's like, all right, look, she's over there. She's in the bed. It's like, and some people may argue, like, that this is dumb. Clearly, that's not his daughter. But at the same time, we know that Daniel isn't mentally all there. So maybe he might think it is a failure. And maybe we could go in that direction. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what Strand was hoping for. And that was probably the, the best piece of writing in this episode. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, oh, yeah, that would work. I should see that as a possibility. Because then if you say, oh, no, no, she's right here. Look, there she is in the bed. Don't you see her? It's 50-50 chance. He may be like, oh, shoot, 
That is her. Oh, I'm sorry. I wasn't here for you, but I'm here for you now. Okay, Strand, what do we need to do? Okay, this is what we need to do. Get the weapons. We got to kill everybody. You know what I mean? Strategize. That's what he was hoping for. That did not happen. Uh, he realized, like, that's not my daughter. It's like, no, no. Uh, okay, no, no. But that's Charlie. Remember, you, you had a good relationship with Charlie, which they did. And he's like, she's sick. She's really sick. You need to take care. No, no, it's not my daughter. Where's my daughter? She's dead. Remember, he was fired, the whole thing. Come on now. It's like, mm-hmm. try to wake him up. Uh, and eventually he turns around and he realizes he needs to be with Charlie. But then he really needs to be. Like, he, there's, they're getting shot at on other floors and everyone is out to get him. But he's going to stay there in the infirmary with Charlie now. <laughs> yeah. So that, again, it's like, oh. Come on, this is just too much. It's just, it's, it's just too much of this back and forth, and, and the storytelling is all over the place. Yeah. You know, and then Wes, and then one scene. See if you could uh, explain this to me. So they get to a point where he has to put on a, they, he, uh, he has some uh, tear gas, right, strand. And he says, all mm-hmm. right, we need to get upstairs. I'm going to throw this tear gas, right? Uh, once I clear out the area, then you follow. So he goes, she goes, um, Alicia. But there's one part of that where he bumps into Wes. I'm, maybe I'm mixing up the points. But there is a part where he bumps into Wes. And it's just Strand and Wes. And Wes is trying to talk him out of this. Yep. And he says no. And he runs off. <laughs> what? <laughs> Wes was holding a gun. He could have easily just put you down right... What is happening? Well, you're just going to let him keep running? Is this tag? And it's like, oh, no one saw me tag you, so I guess we have to keep playing. Yep. That's exactly what it was. They they, they were very hesitant this entire episode until the very end when they when they decided to pull the trigger or somebody got killed. But it's it, it just like they kept delaying it the entire episode. Because <sighs> I guess if they tried to... Excel it, it would make the episode a lot a lot shorter than it actually was. Yeah, because then they get to another part, and then and now they're pretty much. Uh, I guess you they were they were in a room and they were just trapped pretty much. There was no other way out. They have some yeah. guns. They're getting shot at. All the rangers are on the other side of the door. Now everybody wants to kill. I guess Strand had no friends because <laughs> not a single one. I was like, hey. In fact, they didn't even say anything. They were all extras. No one said a word. No one even second guessed. Like, hey, we've been here for a while. He sort of set everything in motion, and now we're just following you. We don't really. Know. No one questioned it. So they're all shooting to kill. They get in. Uh, Wes starts, you know, points the gun, and he starts talking, and they get into a little back and forth about the whole thing. I think this was also, if I recall, this is the moment where Strand starts opening up to Alicia, saying, you know, I did this for you, and I wanted to. You were the daughter I never had. Blah 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 getting all into that yeah maybe because he knows he's gonna die or he thinks he's gonna die west points the gun they go through the whole thing west says he was going to kill her he said she's the one we have to make this place safe we have to do what you said we we're gonna do she's the problem yep right but then daniel comes in there's a whole big thing he helps they get rid of the other ones the the goons and then now the tables are turned now strand has uh, uh the gun and alicia's talking and then uh uh, Wes is just standing there, and he kills Strand, kills Wes, yeah, and uh, and it was fine, made perfect sense. But the worst part, and again, I was like, man, the <laughs> eyes, my eyes, I felt like the meme of when you see the, with the woman with her eyes is rolling in the back of her head, like, what the <laughs> hell is is this moment when at least was like, why did you kill him? Why? This entire time he was out to kill. It wasn't a question. It wasn't to lock you in a room or a cell like Teddy. It was to kill you. He was yeah. about to kill you. This man was never going. As if like she felt oh. like, no, we were going to turn him. No. Yep. So I, I agree that I also didn't like that. And I, I know what they were trying to do is because earlier in this episode, she basically was the one that helped Daniel to realize okay, that's not Ophelia, and, you know, she was the one that, that turned him over, so I guess they wanted to show, oh, she was going to try to do the same thing and con- and convince Wes that, uh, yeah, to stand down, but Strand killed him before he had a chance to, because he knew that Wes was not going to change. He was still going to, to fight back, so he said, no, I'm going to take matters into my own hand, and, of course, he uses the sword to... Uh, 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> to, 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 to oh. kill Wes. <laughs> oh, that was it. The sword. My bad. That's right. I knew he had yeah. the sword. Oh, man. No. I'm sorry. If somebody is trying to kill me and sending other people out to kill me and just like two minutes before had a gun point that I had ready to kill me, yeah, take them down. Don't like, oh, well, now let's see if I can pull my counseling skills out and see if I can flip him again. I would never trust this man. No. Sorry. That's it. So I don't I I don't get it. And then she looks at him with this it was strand in like disbelief. Like, how dare you? Oh uh, none of that made sense. <laughs> none of that made sense. Well no, 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 none of that makes sense and, and and since you are mentioning the whole thing about it taking them so long to get upstairs, that that definitely was a matter of convenience because if I recall at the beginning of this episode that was when Strand had let out that loud siren that was going to lead the other uh, exposed uh, walkers t- to where the the rest of the army was at. So the whole point of them getting upstairs quickly to turn off the beacon was to prevent them from finding them. Mm-hmm. But uh, but of course, because this is a, a matter of convenience, it took the entire episode, and by the time they got upstairs, oh yeah, everybody is still safe. There's nothing to worry about. But in reality, that would not happen. Yeah. Because no. them walkers would have already gotten over there, oh, and, yeah. you know. Well, so. well, we're getting to the second eye rolling moment, <laughs> and uh, the second major one is, as you mentioned, you got the crew outside. You have some of the guys. That, well, the, Daniel says, "All right, I'm going to go and tell everybody." That we're good, you know, and it's like, yeah, yeah, we're good, we're good. We're gonna head to the roof. We're gonna turn off the beacon. Tell everybody to get inside. Everything is fine. He goes down there. Now we see the rest of the crew. He, um, oh, I'm blanking on the the brother's name, but he bumps into his sister. She's there. Everybody, oh yeah, Wendell. 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 Wendell's there. The sister's there. She's so happy. He's alive. She doesn't hug him. I I guess that has to do with the whole COVID thing. And after this, <laughs> I mean, come on now. Part, come to, I mean, if I haven't seen my brother or sister, and I have both in real life, I'm like damn right i'm gonna hug him i'm like oh yeah. man i haven't seen you in so long i thought you were dead so whatever it was weird it's the little things people it's the little things so at this moment you can see off the in the distance they are coming those walkers are coming right <laughs> these are the ones these are the bad bad ones right these are the infected ones from the nuke and, yep. and all that stuff and so they're like trying to get everybody in and there's some other uh, walkers out there they're already fighting some of them and this is it this is the moment so while they're up there strand gets up to turn it off and he says what am i doing why am i turning this off what is the point <laughs> he flips <laughs> he goes back to her old strand she was like what are you talking about and he says, oh, there's no point to this. You're never going to love me. You're <laughs> never going to love me and see me the way I... Oh, what? What? Yep. That's right. Uh, uh, th- oh, right it, there. Me knows I was so angry. I got so angry. I was like, this is... This is the worst. This it, is the worst episode I've seen on this show. Oh, oh, oh! It, w- w- without a doubt, and, and what it what it shows to me is that they struggled when they came up with this idea to say let's make Strand the villain. Clearly, everybody is not on the same page with that idea because if if that's the case, you wouldn't have the character flip flop back and forth to try to make you think, oh, well, no, now I'm going to be good. No, but I'm evil. The Strand has done so many bad things this season. I don't think the character is redeemable. Yeah. Yeah, remember so it doesn't um, make sense. There was a whole montage a few episodes back of him just throwing people off the roof, yep. just throwing them off. Oh, you have a walkie-talkie? Off you go. <laughs> you know? Oh, hey, you know that was a one of the play school. That was a toy one. Too late, <laughs> threw them off. Doesn't matter. Everybody has to go. Ah, man, and then the other funny moment is that uh, back with the crew when they all reunite and Grace is asking. She's like, hey, where's where's uh, Morgan? Oh, he took your advice, and he went with Mo to find somewhere safe. And her, the look on the actress's face was like, what? <laughs> like, like, what? I was waiting for her to say, I didn't say that. I'm like, we have you on tape saying it, lady. But it, it was more like, where did he go? It wasn't like, I was expecting her to say, oh, good, good. No, it was like, if there was a follow-up, the follow-up would have been like, where is that safe place and why aren't we there 
you know, why didn't you guys go? This makes no sense. Well, well, yeah, I mean, it really doesn't make sense when you look at the whole marketing for the show because from the start of this season, there was images of Strand and Morgan as if it's a face-off. And then when the show came back for this second half, they had Alicia also in that picture. So it kind of feels like Morgan should be a part of this, but I guess they decided, no, we need to worry about the safety of the baby, so we're going to take him away from all the chaos that's happening uh, instead. But, yeah, it doesn't make any, any kind of sense because if something happens to Grace, well, that's it. Morgan has no chance of reuniting with the person he cares about, so it, it doesn't make any sense at all. None of that makes sense. None of that makes sense. <laughs> Last episode was also a mess, but not to this extent. A little bit when the majority of the episode, it's like, we're going to go to war. We're going to do it now. We're going to do it now. It was Alicia that was trying to hold off, and he's like, no, no, we're going to do it now. We're going to do it now. Wait, there's a tape recording? What? Oh, got to find some tape. <laughs> oh, forget that. Um, I need to leave. Oh, wait, wait. Oh, sure. You you got a raft? All right, can I take it? Where are you going? I, I don't know, but I, I got to go. I, I'm sorry. I got to go. You, you live in a submarine with big metal doors with plenty of food. Just stay there. Mm-hmm. That's it. That's it. I know for some people, like well, there's no story. You're right. There is no story there. But this is the direction that they decide to go in. The writers to make it seem like, oh, I have to get the baby somewhere safe. Well, right now, that is the safest place, that submarine. There's food, there's shelter, there's big metal doors, so it's not like walkers are going to be able to just smash through. Not happening. Yeah. We already know that Strand and, and his people know where that is because remember, Howard, a few episodes back in, the Rangers just walked up in there. <laughs> they just walked up in there. They could have killed everybody. What war? We're going to end this right now. That was the other part I, I never understood when that happened. Like, why? <laughs> why are you waiting for war? What is? Is this like the, like the old days of when the British would line up? It's like, all right, there's a certain art of combat. We're all gonna line up in a row and walk toward each other, and just follow the rules of combat. None of this crazy guerrilla warfare, like jumping out of trees or sneaking up behind us. You know, face to face, and that's what I felt like. I was like, are they waiting for a duel? Like, oh yeah, we could kill you now, but right, we'll wait till you approach us. Makes no sense. That makes no sense. And yeah. this, and so yeah. So then they get into the whole battle and the whole thing up uh, on top, uh, and uh, they do break it. It falls down. All right? She shoots at it. It collapses. There goes that. But it's too late. We still got a bunch of the walkers coming. Uh, but it, it looks like everybody made it inside. Right? Yeah. We didn't, they didn't lose anybody. I think they lost some of the extras. You see some of them like screaming. I guess some of Teddy's people um, having some issues. <laughs> but uh, yeah. but all the main yeah all the main characters are are here that we need to care about. That's a, besides Morgan and Mo. And then that was it. That was the episode. And uh, this was an epic fail. I am so, so disappointed. Go ahead, Rich. Uh, well, yeah, I I also have to say that I that I am disappointed. Uh, I do want to give a shout out to one of our commenters because I saw there was somebody asking in the comments a couple weeks ago if uh, the Pope character, uh, if that actor was going to be back on the show, and we did see him in this episode because he was among the group. Uh, you know, after all this time, I guess the character they decided, yeah, we'll bring you back again. So hopefully he survives. Because uh, apparently it sounds like uh, there are some people that like the character, but uh, we'll see about that. But I just want to say this. Um, oh, what about the, the bounty hunter's brother who went wandering oh, off? That's a great question. Well, well we never saw him, so yeah. I, I don't know if he's coming back. What was the point of saying, wow, we love this actor. We're going to make believe he had a twin and bring him so he can stick around on the show. And he's not on the show. Well, this is well, I, well I'll, I'll say this. Now, I saw that, you know, in the last couple of days... Maybe this is after this episode has aired. There's been a lot of articles coming out of people saying that it feels as though they are trying to reboot the show. Because if you look at the fact that Morgan, you know, he goes on that raft. A lot of people are saying it looks as though he's going back to Georgia. We know that the filming is moving back to Georgia. Mm -hmm. But The Walking Dead is, is ending. So I don't really know if you're going to see uh, Morgan make an appearance in the last couple episodes of that show. Uh, because, I mean, I guess that's uh, likely, unless it's another spinoff that they haven't announced yet that he's going to be in, which also, I guess, seems likely. But it feels to me like 
that they are going to reboot the show because you already announced that you know Kim Dickens is returning to the show. You announced that, uh, of course, a lot of the other people like like the actor that plays uh, Strand as mm-hmm. well as uh, Alicia, both of them have other projects that they've been working on. And I don't know if they're coming back, but they have written themselves into a corner with Alicia because she has a terminal illness. Charlie has a terminal illness. So it kind of feels like both of those characters cannot make it out of this season. So um, I really don't know what they're doing, but if they are rebooting the show, I, I really would need to see... Whatever their grand plan is, they only have two episodes left, so I, it needs to end in a way that it makes sense. Because up to this point, a lot of stuff didn't make sense. Um, so I, I guess we'll have to wait and see. But uh, yeah, they, they're not doing a very good job. I think they have a lot of ideas, and and I do from what I do understand is uh, when there was another showrunner, because if there was another showrunner prior to the ones they have now, he had said his original plan was to eventually make the characters on this show actual villains. And that's what they have started to do. Because if you recall earlier in the season, when Morgan tried to kill Strand, Mm -hmm. that's not something that the regular Morgan would have done. So clearly, doing stuff that's really pushing the lines of somebody being evil. And of course, we saw what Strand did this season. So if that's what their goal is, that's fine. But to um, to basically turn everybody into Negan. Yeah. yeah, so that way they all have it's like it's uh, that gray line. I'm just like, ah, oh, not that evil, but we can do some evil things if we need to. Exactly, so, exactly. Yeah, it's that's one thing I do love that I used to love about this show is that every season felt different than the last. It was mm-hmm. never like a continuation, whether they were on a boat or on an island or in a hotel or in Mexico or a compound, and then this one with the nuke. It was always, in a way, a fresh start. Same cast members, some little twists here and there with some of the cast members, but majority of the same people in different locations and scenarios. Like, all right, man, how are they going to get out of this one? You know, what's going on here? Uh, they've dropped the ball on, on several occasions. One member, we had the, the Native American group. Remember the dude that uh, Ophelia was, was with? The guy with the long hair and the whole thing. I thought they were going to have a major part. They really didn't. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. they didn't do much. Remember the whole thing with the dam and all that. So uh, they they've they stumbled along the way, but for the most part, it's been pretty solid. But this man, this just <laughs> between yeah. that and the issues with Daniel and trying to trick him just to to run around and do all this other stuff for them, and uh, it, it was it was just too much. It's too much. And uh, I. Th- Madison has to show up. Like you said, something has to happen in the last two episodes. She has to show up. It, it, it's clear that she didn't play a major part in the second half of the season, which I thought she was. That's not the case. Yeah. Then it's definitely going to be like a dun dun dun, and I'm going to be here going forward. So, 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 uh, so this, so this, so this, this is what I will say real quick because the way the episode ends, you see that Alicia makes a call for help. Um. Meanwhile, because of her little fight with Strand, now the roof is on fire and the fire is quickly spreading to the rest of the of the tower. And yet the other group, the other army group, they are trapped with all of the walkers that are literally right at the door. So I, I feel like the next episode, um, something has to happen rather dramatic. Oh, man, do you uh, think is that how Madison pops up? She has her own group and says oh i heard the call and we were further away and we did yeah. the tracking because that's the only thing in because everybody seems to know the f- same frequencies on these walkie talkies yeah yeah, I- yeah that's likely and i saw that they had a shot of morgan also inside the raft somewhere so morgan obviously is not going to yeah be we're gonna to- see they, that's one of the things the showrunner also mentioned over at emc plus he had mentioned that we will see morgan again <laughs> they made that clear because I'm sure they heard the backlash of people like, really, is this how you get rid of a main actor? You, you put him on a raft with a baby. <laughs> you send him on his way to nowhere land. At least if he had a, a destination, that would make yeah. sense. It's like, All right, where are we going? Well, I know there's this island off in it. You see it? Yeah, I see it. All right, I'm going to try to get there and see what happens. No, it's just like... Yeah, a three hour tour. You know, it's <laughs> Gilligan. Just go. <laughs> Let's see what happens. I wish you all the best. Yeah. It's, it was, ugh. but man, this episode really upset me. 
That's really upsetting. <laughs> the whole time yeah. watching this. So upset. I was like, man. This, there were so many possibilities that I had such high expectations for this season, right? Yeah. The fallout of the nuke, it started off real strong. Everyone's wearing the suits, and there's all this chaos going on. Now you had radioactive walkers. It's just, they, they throw a lot of uh, different variables, a lot of different things that we've never seen in this universe, especially in, in, on, in, on the shows. Or in Walking Dead proper. We never had this issue. Yeah. And, and to just dumb it down to it's just I want you to love me. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? It, it, and then to flip, I'm, I'm telling you that part. I'm t- I was so mad right at the part where he's about to turn it off. Like, why am I doing this? You'll never love me. Yeah, I was like, just shoot him now. Kill him. Now. <laughs> Let's end this now. Because even the, you know, she looked at him like, what? Now you're doing this? Yep. Come on. <laughs> Come on. The flip flopping. <laughs> That's just, it was ridiculous. So I, I know people, you would leave in the comments if I, if you felt the same. Or maybe I'm, in the, I'm the only one. That, that, oh, that no, no. Because... I'm, I'm pretty sure there's a lot of people who are going to be frustrated with, uh, oh. Man. With this episode, I this think that's is, a guarantee. Yeah, I, they have to go out with a bang. They have to have a strong finish. The, the, some people may go, oh, well, well, they got rid of Wes. Wes, subpar character, supporting character, <laughs> not a main character. Yeah. I'm sorry. And then he also got, it, I won't blame the actor. It's not his fault with the acting and all that, but it's just the writing. He, he flip-flopped so many times. They flipped him so many times. It made no sense. Mm-hmm. There was no sense, and also no sense for anybody to want to follow him. You know, as we pointed out, he just had no real time there. It, that didn't. If that was the role, just leave. Give it to Howard. Maybe the actor had to go to some other projects. It was like, I gotta go. I'm leaving. It's like, oh, shh. all right. I guess we'll throw you off the roof. <laughs> you know, and we gotta fill the spot. Who do we do? Ah, let's let's flip somebody on the other side. All right, let's flip Wes. All right, let's go with that. Because it, it felt very out of place. Mm-hmm. So it, it didn't work for me. So that's why when he died, I'm like, yeah, good for him. Whatever. I don't care. Yeah. Now, if it was Daniel, a little different. Daniel's been there since day one. And with all the double crossing, I mean, even before going into this episode, we thought for sure Daniel's going to kill somebody. Oh, yeah. This someone, And that didn't happen. He, he didn't kill anyone. I think. Well, no, he killed the, the Rangers on the side, but they didn't talk. They were just goons in mass. So uh, no one of importance. And we definitely thought, and then even uh, with Lucy, they go back into that. She's like, yes, I know you lied to me. I know what's going on. Let's just go forward. I get it. You know, Charlie's mm-hmm. in there. She's sick. I, I, we got to deal with that. So. so they just wash that all the way. So does that mean that uh, he is back to normal? Because they, they've never really diagnosed him. It's not dementia. And then I think at some point they said it was like a PTSD because of all the stuff going on with the 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 combat and losing his daughter and all that stuff that was just throwing him off so maybe now that he has charlie back in his life this sort of grounds him oh no that's 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 gonna be a temporary uh she won't be around for long the way the way they talk on this show yeah oh yeah they make it seem like everyone's dying because that was the thing they're like oh we have all this meds and none of this gonna help she's gonna turn i was like well this is the slowest turn we've ever seen on any walking dead show if that's the case (laughs) because <laughs> this is days and weeks. Uh, I mean, usually it's just a few hours you get after an amputation to see if you can still survive. If you can, then usually you're good. You don't have uh, lasting issues like she's having. Mm-hmm. So we will have to see for the next episode. So thanks again, everybody, for tuning in and checking us out on Spotify and iTunes or over at thecoalition.com and of course YouTube. Put your comments down. Let's let's get into this discussion because we're getting toward the end of this and let's see if it's even if they can salvage this season because uh, it started off strong and then it just like started sliding down the hill, free falling. Wee! <laughs> <laughs> you know, wee! I can just see people now just like, no more for me. I'm out. You know, mm-hmm. and um, that's it. And we'll see also, we're tossing around an idea maybe uh, for the last episode of the season. Maybe we might do something live on YouTube. So uh, if we do that, we'll let you know in the next episode. And we'll see if we set down a, a time and date. 
and uh, yeah, we'll keep you guys posted. But if that if we do decide to do it, because it's all about timing, we got other things going on and stuff. So if we can work out time and if it works out, then yeah, we'll we'll cover that. And I'm sure, man, it's quote rich. Something controversial will happen at the end of this this season because we have to see something happen. Whether it's Alicia dying, Strand dying, Madison showing up, they have to have something of importance, something to keep people wanting to come back for the next season. Oh yeah, absolutely. And um, so, all right. So that would be it. And we will see you guys next week. Peace. Peace.